Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we're having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of Extrasolar Planets Beyond Kerbal, which is being made by forum user Andrew Draws Pretty Pictures, and what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is, well, planets. It's a planets pack, and in fact, it is one which a few of you guys have been asking me to take a look at for a bit now, so I figured, you know what, what the heck, it's been a while since we've actually had a gander at a planets pack, and, well, I'm glad I did, because this is a pretty nice little pack, as it doesn't just add in new planets to our current solar system, it, in fact, creates a new solar system where these new planets will orbit around a new new red dwarf star by the name of Valentine. So let's jump right on into the tracking station and check out what all this does add in. So first, let us sort of zoom out a bit to our own solar system to see scale, etc. And now that we're here, tilt the camera this way where you'll see that blob and that, that is the new solar system far, far very far away. So of course, if you do want to see any of these planets and or moons in person, you're going to need something like the Interstellar mod pack along with this so that you can actually get there in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, but yes, let us now then uh, tab through all of our current planets to get to our lovely new selection here in the Valentine system, which you can see is a bit smaller of a system, and we have a selection of five planets and five moons. And all of those moons, interestingly enough, are all around this one planet here by the name of Lomina. But let us start by having a quick little look at our lovely new red dwarf star, and yes, a very, very small little sun, uh, not exactly the largest thing, nor the brightest thing. I mean, it is a red dwarf after all, so a lot of these planets in the system are going to be a bit darker than you're used to in the Kerbal system, but overall they still should be well enough lit up. You may need flashlights on a couple of them. Uh, so the first planet that we have is Heba, which, if we scroll in, is the largest planet in this system, and is a gas giant, and a very, very blue gas giant. And actually, in fact, now that I think about it, there's a lot of blue in this particular mod pack. Several planets and moons are all blue in this. I can live with that. I like that color. Uh, but yes, one thing you may notice right off the back here is the texturing is not exactly the greatest. And that is because, I should mention here, this mod is currently in version 0 0.2. Two, So, still a long ways off from version 1.0, and uh, yes, one of the things they are wanting to work on is getting the textures better, refining them more, so hopefully over time we will see these textures all improved, which is hopefully a good thing. But yes, this lovely little planet Heba, or Heba, I... Oh, oh boy. Even though I like this planet pack, I have to admit, I do not know how to pronounce the vast majority of the celestial bodies in this thing, but I'm okay with that. But yes, a very cool little gas giant here. Very blue, very gassy, and very... Heba? <laughs> so let us move on to the next, which is, I think, the most interesting planet lore-wise, or science wise if you want to put it that way, uh, and that is Solith. It is an arid, dead planet devoid of any life whatsoever, but it used to have life. If you read the description here, there was some sort of recent uh, mass extinction on the planet that killed off all life, but left what is remaining of the oxygen atmosphere. So there is a rich oxygen atmosphere on this planet, but of course, in real world science, that oxygen would slowly be taken away by solar winds over the years to deplete to nothingness. But for now, it does at least have something. So it is quite cool. We do have this oxygen atmosphere you can enter. Uh, just don't expect any water or plant life of any variety. Now, the next plant we have is Fust or Fust or again, don't know how to pronounce this one. And this is a very Kerbin-esque type world. As you can see here, it is a planet with a very, 
very vast ocean dotted with multiple little archipelagos of islands scattered about here and there. And, well, this is a cool planet because it is the one planet in the system with life on it. It has a rich oxygen atmosphere, large oceans, and islands dotted with green, as you can kind of see, especially on this particular island right here. Got a lot of good green there. So it is a living world that is quite cool, but will give you a little bit of a challenge because, well, you're going to want to make sure you actually land on, well, land. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going for a swim, and that might be a bad end to your interstellar voyage. Now, the next planet in line is Mir, and this is a giant ball of ice. Literally, it is an ocean of ice, in fact. And yeah, that's that's Mir. I like the sort of uh, cratery bit right there. Very, very nice little touch to an otherwise very round planet. And very cool. And it has a thick atmosphere, apparently. Uh, but yes, it is very, very cold. The next planet we have is Lomina. And this baby is a ice giant. And again... Blue, very blue, but I still love it because, well, it has a ring and I am a sucker for a planet with a ring. And apparently that ring was caused by two of this planet's moons. If we move on to the next, this is Maul or Maul or something along those lines. This moon apparently hit with this moon by the name of Vic and that is what created the ring here and you can still see the sort of scars of said impact on the moon here very very cool indeed and as you can see on their uh, orbital pass they do kind of cross each other a bit so <laughs> dangerous orbits for those things all right the next moon is of course Vic which is much much smaller than the previous moon uh, but yes is probably made smaller by the fact that they collided so so long ago but overall quite a nice little terrestrial planet a very good indeed a bit smooth in places perhaps too smooth but other areas seem to have quite a lot of texture to them like this very nice now the next one we have is Javin and this again very blue because it's an ocean this moon is just one giant freaking ocean. Uh, so that is that is what we got there. It has a very thin atmosphere, so not much to it atmospherically, but a lot of water. If you want to explore this moon, you're going to have to bring along a boat, which is quite the impressive feat on its own to bring a boat on an interstellar voyage. And we then have Demo, which is, I think, my favorite of the planets purely because... I think it has the most beautiful of texturings. I love just all the different colors that we get here and the good contrast between the purple and white, etc. And apparently, according to the info, originally mistaken as a giant plum because of its mysterious plum color. <laughs> I don't know why, but I just, I really, I really like it. It's quite cool. A very, very nice looking little moon. And lastly, we have Lox, a very tiny, tiny little loose conglomeration of rock and ice orbiting around Lomina in a very, very eccentric manner. And uh, yes, it is the most difficult thing to land on. Well, of course, besides a gas giant or a water planet, uh, <laughs> this is very difficult to land on because, well, it's very low gravity and all the jagged edges from all the ice and rock will probably kill you on the way down. But hey, if you want a challenge, there you go, there's locks. But yes, that is enough in the uh, tracking station. Let's actually go have a look at a couple of these up close. We're not gonna look at all of them, uh, but I did want to launch a quick probe to go and have a close-up view of the planets. The moons I'll leave to you guys to go and explore on your own. Well, at least up close and personal. You have, of course, just seen them all in the tracking station. But nonetheless, let us go and uh, take a little visit to first off, Let's go have a look at Heba. So we need a... Uh, da, 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 that's, da, 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 that's 25 million. That's too much. There we go. <laughs> and let's go to Heba. Excellent. And... Oh, where, where is it? Oh, there it is. Oh, actually. Do I still have it at 25 million? <laughs> there we go. 
a little bit closer. Just needed to take away another zero. But there we go. We have uh, the lovely blue gas giant of Heba. Quite a beautiful little thing. Again, needs a little bit better texturing, but that hopefully once more will come in time. Ooh, and I actually probably should mention, there will most likely be more planets and uh, moons added into this particular mod because, well, the mod maker is asking for suggestions. And that is one of the planned features to bring in more into this to give you more options for the solar system, which I, I'm quite looking forward to along with the improved textures. And yes, here we have Glorious Heba. Glorious, Glorious Heba. Let's now go to... Hmm... You know what, yeah, we'll do all the planets, but I'll leave the moons to your imagination for now. You'll have to go and launch your own missions to check those out down the road. Ooh, we can get much closer than this. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Where are we exactly? Oh, actually, let's go back out a bit, because it was quite beautiful from that distance. Ah, yes, the beautiful dead planet of Solith. I, again, I quite like this one because of the science behind it. The whole dead planet, etc. It, of course, has some analogs to our own Mars in our own solar system. And, yeah, it's quite cool to have a planet that was only recently suffered from said catastrophe and is now just a husk of its former self with, the th you know, what oxygen is left. I quite like that. I think it's I think it's cool. But yes, that is a fun little planet. So let us move on to the next. Oh god, no, I don't want to do the planet editor, orbit editor. <laughs> there we go. And after Solith, we have Voost. There we go. Let's get a little bit closer on this one. How close are we? Pretty close. Let's change our longitude and extension or ascension node. Oh no, I need to go around the other way. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, there we go. A little bit better. Excellent. So there we are. We have our lovely Kerbin esque like planet. Again, very dim because of, you know, the whole not very bright red dwarf star but yes it does support life you just might need uh, to turn on your flashlight whenever you go try and land and explore the place a bit but overall a very cool little planet i highly enjoy it especially the challenge of trying to land on some of these smaller islands it can be quite exciting uh, and let's check out the next planet of course being mir the ball of ice very big ball of ice. Okay, there we go. Uh, we need to change our ascension note again. And, oop. There we go. Excellent. Giant ocean of ice. Again, still needs a little bit of work on the texturing, but I do like the giant crater over there. Good times, good times indeed. So, swiftly moving forward to the creme de la creme of Lomina. Oh, we're going to actually have to add that zero back in because, well, giant ice planet. There we go. And let's actually... Ooh, yes. Ooh, we are by moons. Beautiful. Let's change our inclination. Ah, there we are. So now we can see the ring. And, of course... Our glorious Luminos, or Lumina, rather. I keep wanting to say Luminos with it. But no, Lumina, we have two of the moons over there. Very nice. I do enjoy it in our lovely little red dwarf star. I keep wanting to say brown dwarf star, but no, red dwarf, red dwarf. But yes, a very, very cool planet. Very fun to go and explore. And, I mean, come on. Who doesn't want to go and visit some place with giant rings on it? That's just cool. Let's actually change around our... Orbit a bit more. I want to be a bit brighter. Uh, yes, that's good. Excellent. Very, very nice. Uh, but yes, it's it's a very fun mod. I've definitely enjoyed it thus far when I've been playing with it. Uh, it's got a lot of nice planets, a good variety of celestial bodies, which is always good. And overall, just a fun little planet pack that will grow and get better as time goes on. And who doesn't want another solar system to explore? So if you would like to check this out for yourself, you can take a look at the link in the description. And before I forget... I should mention something here that I forgot to mention earlier. This mod actually comes in uh, 
well, the file you download has two versions of the mod in it. One version is the one I'm currently using, which is Kerbal Scale. So it will be this star system to the scale similar to the Kerbal system in the base vanilla game. But it also comes with a, a version of the mod. For those of you out there who enjoy the real solar system mod, who like the large scale of things and making the solar systems far more realistic in their size and scope, it has a version of the mod for that as well. So these planets will be bigger, they'll be more spaced out apart, etc. So you have options for which way you want to go. Do you want the smaller, slightly easier to get to Kerbal scale or the more realistic real scale? Which I, I do enjoy that they give you those options. So for those of you out there who do like the larger scale of things, you can just download it from the same file and you have both options, which is quite lovely. Uh, but yeah, so that is now all I have to say about the mod. Uh, definitely go give it a try, have fun exploring a new solar system, and of course I hope you have enjoyed this episode today and that you do come back for the next, but until then, thank you for watching my friends, and as always, have a good one.